Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina, and in today's video, I'm super excited to share five DIY projects with you. They're all easy, simple, and anyone can do. So there's gonna be a lot of ground to cover, so let's jump into project one. I wanted to share a really easy project that you could create just using a throw rug and some macrame cord. And this is just in the off-white five millimeter macrame cord. Now what we can do is use a hot glue and the Gorilla Glue is actually fabric safe when the temperature is brought down a little. So I'm going to use that glue and I'm only going to go down about three quarters of the way on the throw rug now that it's folded in half. Throw rugs of course come in different sizes, but this is a small size and I thought I would try to make the attempt to see if I could make this into a bucket basket. So once I've completed both sides with the hot glue, to create the form that I needed for a bucket basket, I am actually using that quarter leftover material that I have not hot glued and I am folding it into what is kind of a letter T. And of course I'm gonna do this to both sides. Of course you can hand stitch or if you're handy with a sewing machine, the same would apply. There is also a liquid stitch that you can use um, available at your fabric stores or on Amazon. Hot glue will dry very quickly and once it's dried, all you can do is turn it inside out and now you've created a bucket shape. Now because this rug was pretty plain, I thought it would be nice to do something decorative with it. I'm going to use a crochet hook and it's six millimeters, but whatever you have on hand will work. And I want to measure out the macrame cord to be about 15 millimeters. So I'm going to cut a bunch of strands as I go. I just took the macrame cord, folded it in half, and then placed uh, the top half of it into the crochet hook and pulled it through. This gave me kind of this round loop to put the rest of the macrame cord through and create a knot. I just kept repeating this all the way around the bucket basket that I've now created. And it was great because it actually gave it a little bit of weight to the top and it worked out based on the physics. So this way, the actual throw rug, now bucket basket, will actually sit on its own. Tying it through the loop was super easy. It was just really important that you fold each macrame strand evenly and pulled it through the top of the rim. This way, all of your cuts were nice and even. I was really pleasantly surprised how this actually turned out. And even around the two sides, no problem at all. And I gave it a little trim at the bottom when I was done. I absolutely love these throw mats from Ikea. The fibers of these are so beautiful and very organic looking. So I wanted to create another bucket basket using the exact same method with the hot glue, or again, you could use a stitch or sewing machine. Because this throw rug was shaped a little bit different, it's actually a little bit wider than the first one I did. I actually made the bottom a little bit shorter when I created the little T-form when I put the glue stitch in. So it's much smaller, but it still gave a really nice rounded look and gave the form really well. Because this particular throw rug had a really nice fringe, I just used a dog brush, but you could use any regular brush to brush it all out so it was nice and fluffy. Once I completed brushing all the fringe, I just pulled it inside out and gave a little punch into the bottom there. And then I folded the top just like I did with the first one and gave it another little brush over. And I loved the look just on its own. I noticed that the seam on the inside was sticking out. So I just took a little bit of glue just to fold it in just to make it more cohesive.
Using five skeins of chunky chenille yarn, this is very beginner friendly. We're going to start with a slip stitch. You're just going to turn the yarn into itself and create your first stitch at about two inches per stitch. Again, this is so beginner friendly. You do not have to have any knitting experience to make a beautiful chunky blanket. All you're going to do is pull your working yarn through each stitch so we can chain 30 stitches. Once we've completed our chain, we are now going to use that top bump of the chain to create a new row of stitches. And this is going to be a really easy pattern, I guarantee. You do not need any experience knitting to do this. Once you've created your full chain of new stitches, we are now going to start our pattern. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop the stitch at each end. What you want to do with your working yarn is you want to create a stitch from the top, then you want to create a stitch from the bottom. And this is actually called a stitch and purl, but I just find it easier to explain it as a top stitch and a bottom stitch. So you're taking the working yarn from the top, then you're taking the working yarn from the bottom and you're going to repeat this all the way across your chain of stitches and you're creating a new row. What we are creating is a seed stitch blanket. Now the end stitch is always a back stitch so our border will be cohesive all the way around when we're done. Going to our next row you're going to do the exact same thing but you're going to reverse. So what you did as a front stitch is now a back stitch and vice versa and you're going to do that again when you get to the next row you're just going to reverse how you did the stitch from the stitch below i'm just pointing out here that i have done a back stitch now i'm going to do a front stitch when i get to my next row i'll reverse it and again we're getting to that last stitch it's always a back stitch this way you have a nice braided um, border all the way around the blanket and that's it that's the only thing you need to know to create this beautiful chunky knit blanket and you can stitch this up in less than two hours but you're not on a time limit so you can take all the time you like I wanted to make a two-toned and again doesn't matter if it's all the same color or if you want to put a few different colors into your blanket. All you're going to do is tie your new skein or roll of yarn into a little knot and cut off the tails and continue on. It's that easy. I love how the seed stitch looks and it is really easy to create. It's just remembering that when you're pulling and working with the yarn into your stitches, the working yarn comes from the bottom and it comes from the top and just keep alternating each stitch then when you get to the next row it's going to be the reverse i ended up using a total of five skeins of yarn for this i used two of the camel color and three of the cream and my blanket turned approximately 40 inches wide and 60 inches long to close the end, you're going to take your first stitch, your next stitch, and then you're going to sandwich them together. Take the working yarn from the left to the right and pull it through and proceed on all the way around. And again, this is going to make your border all cohesive so it's the same. Once you get to the end, you're going to have one stitch, pull the working yarn through and pull tight. You can use one knot or you can make a second, then cut it or weave the remaining tail. Easy way to make a slip knot is to tie it around your fingers, pull the working yarn through, and now you have your first stitch. We're going to pull the working yarn through 
and we're going to cast on 16 stitches. What I want to show you how easy it is to make a pillow case that's front and back together. So now that we've casted our 16 stitches, you're now going to pull from the top bump. You're going to make a row of just simple stitches right across. Once we're done that, we're actually going to turn everything around and then we're going to use the bump on the other side. So now that you have all of those, you now have a bump right at the top on the other side. And this would have been a bottom of a blanket, but I'm going to show you how you're going to make an entire pillow by using both sides. So you're now going to cast on another row of stitches just on the other side of your chain that you started. Once we're completed that, I'm going to show you how to do a regular stitch on one side, then we're going to do the same seed stitch on the other. But all you're doing is a regular stitch on both sides of your chain. Once everything is done, we're now going to do that seed stitch. So one front, one back. So again, it's actually a purl stitch and the back stitch. But I like to call it a front stitch and a back stitch. I just find it easier that way. That pattern will be the front of the pillowcase. We're going to flip everything around and we're only going to be doing a simple back stitch. So it'll just be a straight stitch and this will be the back of the pillow. So you're not going to be doing anything other than taking the working yarn from the back of the stitch and pull the working yarn through and you're just going to create over and over the same thing on that side, flipping it around. Again, with that seed stitch, whatever that stitch was before, if it was a back stitch, you're now going to do a front stitch and vice versa. I absolutely love the texture of this seed stitch pattern. It looks so beautiful. What I did find helpful as I continued on to do the back and the front was to fold it. This kept my stitches a little bit closer together and also because we're actually stitching up the side as we go. Once I got about four rows up on both sides, that was when I found it a little bit easier just to fold it and continue on. It seems a little bit floppy when you first start it, but once the rows get taller and taller, it will kind of fold and stay on its own. So not to worry about that. Again, this is going to stitch up so quickly. This pillow size was for a 21 by 26 size pillow. So I'm going to put my insert inside the pillow and then we can go ahead and close it. It was a little tricky with the insert to show on camera, but as you can see, the stitches from the back and the front line up to each other. So you're going to take the first stitch from the front, the first stitch from the back, and pull the working yarn through the first two. Then you're going to take the stitch from the front that you used and the next stitch. And the important rule here is you're going to stitch from left to right with your working yarn. Then you're going to flip your pillow. You're going to take the stitch that already has the working yarn and the next available stitch, but now you're going to take the working yarn and you're going to pull it from right to left. That's the key with closing this and this way both sides will be uniform. So again, the important thing is, is you use one of the stitches that already has the working yarn and grab a new stitch. When you're using the seed side, you're going to go from left to right. When you're using the back side and putting your stitches together, you're going to go from right to left. You want the symmetry of both the sides to work at the top, so that's way when you're ready to close. You're going to have one last stitch and you'll pull the working yarn through and create a knot. And if there's any remainder, just tuck it into the side. I love thick, bulky chenille yarn and it's 100% washable.
had some leftover skeins of the chunky chenille yarn and I'm going to use an Ikea lumbar pillow to create a no knit pillow. I'm actually going to be using a pillow case but to create the dimensions and sizes I needed I'm going to use the pillow insert and I'm going to cut just strips both the vertical and horizontal way and this is 26 by 16 lumbar pillow. I did it this way because I was concerned that the thickness of the insert, I needed a little bit more room on each side. My thick yarn cuts that were horizontal are going to be 27 and the vertical was 17. Because this throw pillowcase has a stain on it, I'm going to recycle it for a new look using this no knit style. To create this look, you can use any type of bulky yarn you may already have. I wasn't even sure if I was going to like this when I first started, so I decided to go ahead and just use some tape so it held everything in place while I sampled out this kind of checkered pattern by weaving the um, horizontal and vertical strips together. To make a better adhesion, I'm just going to use a tiny little dot of some hot glue, but I'm still actually going to be stitching this together. You could also use a series of pins to hold everything in place, but I found that the glue was a little bit faster and I just needed a little tiny dot to hold it in place as I continued to weave the yarn together. You could do a series of different colors to match your color palette, so this is a great way to update and recycle an old pillow. Using that little dab of glue on each of the strands just helped everything so I could create this weave nice and tight. When I got to the top, I then tightened it again with a little tiny bit of hot glue just to hold everything nice and straight. And again, you could use pins. This is also a great idea for leftover yarns. I also have a piece of a boucle material that I'm going to put on the back and this is going to put everything into uniform all the way around the throw pillow. Once I had everything placed with the boucle material, I then folded in all of my loose ends and I went around and hand stitched everything in together. This pillow cover has a zipper and I of course want to continue to be able to use that. So I'm going to hand stitch both sides around the zipper so everything is tightly put together. The only thing that I found a little bit frustrating was it was a little bit all over the place. So I folded the leftover yarn strips over the pillow case. This way it held into place when I went around to do the hand stitch. So this made everything a lot easier and went so much faster. This way too, I wasn't making one strip too loose and another strip too tight. For the front side of the pillowcase, I just used a tiny little bit of the hot glue in front of the zipper. Then I trimmed all of my yarn strips so they were nice and even, then went back with my needle and thread and sewed it all down. As long as everything is hand sewn, it's all done on the inside, so you don't have to worry too much how it looks. You're not even going to see it. And including the yarn strips, they're so big and bulky, you're not even going to see the thread. So this turned out really, really well. And I was really unsure when I first got started, but I'm so glad I did this. A perfect way to restyle, recreate, and recycle. Congratulations to Dahlia Aguilera for winning the Chunky Blanket. I'm going to have that out to you as soon as possible. And because you guys were amazing at all your wonderful and beautiful comments, I'm going to do another Chunky Blanket giveaway. And that's coming up in the next couple videos. Of course, I'm going to share the process on how to make a quick and easy Chunky Blanket and a new creative style with it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And please, if you have any questions and or, because I love reading your comments, leave a comment in the comment box below. And if you haven't already, 
hit that subscribe button and notification bell. It's going to tell you when I upload my next video. And until then, take care. I'm looking forward to sharing so many more fun DIYs, room makeovers, and furniture projects with you soon. So take care.